So all those terms I will introduce. Without getting into the sutra, you are familiar with the technical terms now. Later when we study sutra, then you, there you will see. You are already familiar with the terms. So, it is. Similarly, it. You know what it letter is. The Mahakeshwara Sutra, we saw it. That is not only it. It. Now, that it is a name, Sanya, applicable to many things. You know the Datu, uh, Kru Datu, important Datu. Important Datu. Karoti, Krutaha, Kurvanti, right? That is derived from the Datu, Kru Datu. I am just giving an example. Kru-dhatu. If you see the Dhatu Pata, Dhatu Pata is a grantha written by Pani Magarishi, a list of Dhatus are given. And the Dhatus, whether it is Hapmani Padi, Parashni Padi, and their Swaras, everything is given. If you see the Dhatu Pata, you cannot find the Dhatu Kru. You will not find. You will find Dukrung. You will find. Dhu will be there before Kru, and the last letter will be. Yeah, Ekara will be there. Dukrin. This do and nya both are it letter. You have to drop it. It's like a pack. No, it, remember I told it, it letters are packaging letter. The parcel is inside the package. Remove the package, throw it. It's of no use. It's only for keeping the, the item you know, uh, safe. Once the package is removed, it's of no use. That is what the it letter serves. So do is a it letter, nya is a it letter. The content of the Dhatu Dukrin is Kru. So when we study the, the Dhatu, when we do the derivation, I will say Kru. But later Dukrin, we will add. So Du Nya is a Hith letter. In the context of the particular, you know, the Dhatu, there it is, they are called Hith letters. But Hith letter already, the, the name we know, familiar. So we will be using that. So like that, many technical terms will come. So whenever the context room I will introduce, if required, the sutra also will be introduced. Give a short, uh, a brief introduction to the, the sutra. Even for Sandhi also. Sandhi already we, without sutra, but it is in line with sutra only. So, so when we study sutra later, it will be easy. So we have to make a, a balance. So I will not wait for the, the whole, uh, if I need to get completed. First we have to know the language, because somebody is going to start Bashyam, <coughs> therefore we should be feel comfortable, first thing is comfortable in reading Sanskritam, fluently, that is number one. <coughs> Second thing is identifying the Kriya Padam, Kartra Padam, Karma, what are the Karakas are there, that is next one. Slowly we will see, the Kridanta is another thing, past participle, present participle, those things will be there, that we have to identify what they are. Understand the meaning. Then, once you know this, you can understand. You can do the translation. Right? Translation of the, the sentence. So, that's all we are going to do. <coughs> so, the 11th lesson onwards, I think uh, they are introducing uh, past tense. We have seen present tense. That too, on, only for few dhatus. So, we need to have a, a, a lot of vocabulary. Vocabulary, I mean, as well as in, term, I mean, in terms of dhatus also. Vocabulary, the noun, nouns and their meanings. And dhatu also we need to know. A lot of dhatus uh, in the first gana, we are familiar with the first gana only. Slowly we will see the dhatus belonging to the other ganas and the derivation will be, we will see slowly. First we will start with the derivation, first gana, simple uh, derivation. Without sutra, but in line with sutra. I will not tell the sutra, but we will do that. This is how we are going to do Slowly we will introduce one one topic. First Tinganta, then uh, then Laka, then uh, Kridanta. Kridanta is it's like a lot of pratyasad. Kridanta so many pratyasad. Past participle, present participle. You know, and uh, we will see one by one. The infant reader itself slowly introduces. The context comes, we will see. So I will follow infant reader, I will follow the Antoine book also and other textbook, whatever it is there, that also will follow. Right, this is how we are going to do. And uh, the Shabdas, very important. Shabdas, we need to have uh, uh, good, you know, the, uh, the knowledge of these Shabdas. The Shabdas also, you know, you need not know all the Shabdas, some important Shabdas you, you must know. Other Shabdas,
methods we will see we will see some connection and we will try to you know by, by connection we will remember the shabdas so this is what we are going to do and at the end of your shabda manjari advanced shabdas are given don't worry about that with a simple uh, shabda we can do big things right so first uh, we will uh, go through the shabdas what we have learned let's start with this this we have seen the last uh, last course right alpakshan definition of a sutra you know the meaning like this all of you know the meaning of this no no okay okay i will tell the meaning now yes um, but uh, we, we saw the meaning in detail right okay i'll give simple meaning of this uh, the definition of sutra first let us chant alpaksharam asandigdham sarabat vishvato mukham sarabat vishvato mukham astobham anavadyam cha astobham anavadyam cha sutram sutra vidu vidu sutram sutra vidu vidu there are six lakshanas characteristics of a sutra which are given here alpaksharam number 1 asandigdham number 2 saravat number 3 vishvatomukam 4 astobham 5 anavadyam 6 this the sutra must have these six lakshanas shat lakshanani sutra lakshanani what are they alpaksharam number 1 alpa is a little alpa prana you know alpa prana alpa atma Mahatma, Alpatma. So Alpa means a little, you know. Aksharam, letter. So Alpa Aksharam means using minimum number of letters. A sutra must use a minimum number of letters. Right? A sutra is not a sentence. It is not a vacuum. Sutra is not a vacuum. A vacuum will have a kriya pada. Sutra will not have a kriya pada. sutra will not have adjective sutra will not have any unnecessary the particles minimum number of letters ardha matrena ardha matra lagavena putrotsava manyante vayakarana by saving a single letter vayakarana grammarians they feel so happy as though they got a child <laughs> that is the happiness they have so minimum number of letters you have to use in the sutra and number of sutras also minimum both minimum number of letters minimum number of words and minimum number of sutras in the sutra pata ashtadhyayi there are about 4000 sutras the number vary from book to book some say 3987 something we cannot further compress this not possible because he has presented the whole grammar in the minimum number of sutras you can extend that anybody can do but the whole information it tightly packed in minimum number of sutras that is the important characteristics of sutram alpaksharam second one asandigdham because it is it uses minimum letters minimum words minimum sutras it should be it should not be doubtful to be clear it should be free from any any ambiguity that is asandigta free from any doubt doubt saravat it should deal only with what is essential what is connected with the subject matter it will not it should not deal with any unnecessary things focus only with your the subject matter vishvatomukha vishvatomukha is its applicability is wide that is called vishvatomukha a sutra need not have only application only in a particular context it is applicable in so many other contexts like uh, this example mobile phone is uh, what is the use of this mobile it's only for calling 
now i can watch video social media is there whatsapp is there facebook is there camera is there calculator is there so many apps are there <laughs> right so uh, you can do if you, if you want to know the time so so the clock also that is a result that is the vishwatomakam similarly sutra also the next one is astobham astobham means uh, stoba is glorification so you should not glorify no for glorification you needs uh, words right you are good you are somya so no glorification no unnecessary particles that is the astobham all these are negative see alpaksharam alpaksharam okay asandigdam na sandigdam asandigdam na stobham astobham anavadyam next one the last one it should be free from errors to be free from any defects anapadya these are considered to be the sutra lakshanas that which have this this lakshanas are considered to be sutram by sutra vidaha sutra vidaha is the one who knows the sutra the knowers of sutra call this as a sutra which have the six lakshanas this is the meaning of this sutra even when you study brahma sutra actually we will explain start the class with this sutra only the definition of sutra so better to know now right clear all of you okay so we like about that illa so thank you okay. mageshwara sutra ani you know the uh, the context the mageshwara the sutra this uh, 14 sutras revealed by mahe maheshwara to pani magarshi maheshwara agatani sutrani maheshwara sutrani it has got many names akshara samamnayam pratyahara sutrani right maheshwara sutrani so many names are there so let us chant this you all know the maheshwara sutra yes yes sir so it's not just knowing the sutra pratyahara is important what is pratyahara dharana dhyana pratyahara asana samadhi not that pratyahara <laughs> pratyahara is pratyahriyate iti pratyahara that is uh, it is the uh, grouping of letters pratyahara is grouping of letters grouping of letters uh, you will see see for example uh, ach when we say ach covers all the vowels all the vowels are grouped and they are named ach ach is a sanya name ach is a sanya name and the content of the sanya is sanyi a is a sanyi e is a sanyi o is a sanyi all the vowels are sanyi they are the content of the sanya ach so ach is groups the groups all the vowels hal groups all the consonants jash groups all the jash what is jash yeah yes what is that not sub consonant sub consonant hash okay jabba kada dash what are what are that what is that third letter third letter of all the classes wrong word right jash third letter of all the classes what about khar hard consonants this is grouping so now let us chant this how many pratyahara is possible with this mageshwara sutra 42 41 43 mageshwara mandarishi has used but many are possible not required only 43 we need to know right let us start with the one ayun rulak e ong e ong ai auch hayavarat lanna this you have to note lanna la with the chandra bindu nasalized la what are its constituents la when you say let me ask hayavarat ha is what is ha hayavarat hakara plus a a is for all the consonants 
because consonants cannot be pronounced independently, right? So the vowel is added, the a is added for the sake of pronunciation. So when we consider the pratyahara, we should know it is only consonants, pure consonants. Ha, ya, va, rat. Though even though the a sound is there, and you have to understand the a is only for the sake of pronunciation. Cha, artam, akaraha. A is, you have to drop it. When you say soft consonant, hush, hakara, yakara, vakara, repa, all the consonants, right? Akara is only for uchanta. Otherwise, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> cannot come, you cannot pronounce it all, right? Therefore, akara. Now, the sixth sutra, lan. What is the letter there? Nasalized eyes. Uh, in uh, this nasalized uh, this, uh, bubbles are used in the mantra shastra. So this is nasalized bubble. The A with the chandra bindu. That is nasalized bubble. Bubbles also nasalized. Okay. So the chandra bindu is important. Then. Nyamanganam. Jabhain. Say the Jabai or Jabanj, but are okay. Gadadash, Jabagadadash, Kapa Chatata Chatatau, Kapai Shashasar, Hal Ha Hakara is repeated twice. Why? Hakara being a soft consonant. Therefore, it is at the beginning. You see the order now. The first four sutra covers all the vowels, right? Starting from the fifth sutra up to the tenth sutra, all the soft consonants are covered, right? And the, from the eleventh to the last sutra, from the eleventh to the thirteenth sutra, not thirteenth, let us say twelfth sutra, all the hard consonants are covered. The thirteen and fourteen covers all the sibilants. So there is an order is a so, Hakara being a sibilant, it has to be part of sibilant. Being a soft consonant, it has to be part of soft consonant. Therefore, it is repeated twice. But when we say Hal, Hal means soft, all the consonants. Not only the letter Ha. Not only the letter Ha. That Pratyaha we don't use. It is not used in the Sutra Pata. Hal, when we say, it covers all the consonants. Clear? Okay. Then, Shiksha Sutrani. You all know the Uchana Stanam of all the letters? Yes? Akuka Visarjaniyanam Kantaha Ichu Yashanam Talu Rutu Rashanam Murtha I assume you all know, okay? So I am not explaining this. Lutulasanam Dantaha. How many of you want to revise this? Okay. We'll do it. Upu Patmani Yanam, Upu Patmani Yanam, Oshto. Upu Patmani Yanam, Oshto. Nyamanga Nadanam, Nasika Acha. Say it properly again. Followed by? All the 
becomes Ardha Visarga when it is followed by Kakara or Bhakara. Ardha Visarga. That Ardha Visarga is called Upadmaniya and it is pronounced like what? Punaf, Punaha, Fa song. That is only Fa in Sanskrit. There is no other Fa. Then the fifth letter of all the classes, they are Nasal. Nasal. Nasika. Nyamangana. Nam. Nyamangana. Nyamangana. Five letters are there, right? Fifth letter of all the classes. What about Nam? What is Nam? Nyamangana. Nam is it? Nyamangana. Nam. What is it? Nam. Yeah, what? What do you remember? Shashti Vrati, good. What vachanam? Not vachanam, like what shabda? Rama shabda. 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 Nyama ngana na is a shabda. Nyama ngana na ha. Nyama ngana na nao. Nyama ngana na ha. So we can decline like that. And when Shashti Vrati comes, it will be like this. Nyama ngana na na ha. Nasika acha. Right? All these are Shashti Vrati. Akuga Visarjani Yanam Shashti Vibhakti Bhagu Vachana Ichu Yashanam Shashti Vibhakti Bhagu Vachana Everything like Rama Shabda That is Akuga Visarjani Yanam is one word Okay I fun is only for the Our sake of understanding the individual letters But it is one word Akuga Visarjani Yanam Visarjani Yanam is a Pratipadikam And Akuga Visarjani Yanam is Shashti Vibhakti Eka Vachana Rama Anam Rama Shabda We saw right Shashti Vibhakti Kantaha One One Right? Okay. Then, A day to ho kanta talu. A is the first letter. You know, it's a conjunct vowel. A day. Day, day means I is the. A and I. Both are kanta and talu. It's a conjunct. Combination of two places of pronunciation. That is called conjunct. Right? What is a conjunct vowel? Conjunct vowel. Remember the definition? Definition means, I mean, the, I give uh, what, what are uh, conjunct vowels. They start from one place of pronunciation and end with another place. That is, the place of pronunciation is different. Whereas for the simple vowels, it is throughout same. A is kanta, always kanta. E is talu, always talu. Whereas A is, starts from here, ends with the palate. That is, with kanta talu. Kanta is starting point, ending point is talu. Not talu kanta. Kanta talu. So, A and I, these two have Kanta and Talu as its Ucharana Sthan. O Dau Togo, O and Au. Dau is there, that is Au. Sandhi has happened there. We will see that later. O and Au, Kanta and Oshtam. Vakarasya Danta Oshtam, we have seen. What is Jikhva Mulya? Say Jikhva Mulyam. What is Jikhva Mulya? Ardha Visarga, same. Visarga becomes Ardha Visarga when followed by Kakara or Kakara. Becomes Ardha Visarga and that is called Jigva Moliya and its Puchana Sadam is the root of the tongue, Jigva Moliyam. Nasika Anuswara is here. What is Anuswara? The Bindu, dot. That is Nasika Nesal. This is the Shikshya Sutra. Clear? We'll move on now. This we will chant. This covers all the vibhakti of the Ramashatta and it's also a prayer. Right? Do you all know this? Yes? Ramo Rajamanisada Vijayate Ramo Rajamanisada Vijayate Ramam Ramesham Bhaje Ramam Ramesham Bhaje Ramena Vigata Nishacharacham Tasmai Namaha Ramana Stiparayanam Parataram Ramasya Daso Smyaham Rame Chittalaya Sada Bhavatume If you 
know this shloka, understand the drama, drama shabda, eka vachanam of all the vibhaktis are used, then you know karaka, what karaka is. Right? Ramaha Rajamanihi Sada Vajigati. What is Ramaha? Pratama Vibhakti, eka vachanam. Ramam Ramesham Bhaje. Bhaje is what? Aham Bhaje. Aham Namaskaromi. Bhaje is I worship. Aham Archami, Pujayami. Whom do I worship? What is Rama there? Object. Therefore, Rama. Second case. And just expand the Karaka. Okay. Just, uh, they are not going to see Karaka again. You want to see the Karaka again? Because we have started from 11th lesson. Okay. So, I am not going to say Karaka again. With this Shloka, the Karaka is done. You want to do it? Or Karaka? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll do it. Ramena Nigata Nisha Chara Chamu. Ramena is Tritya Bhakti. That is Rama he, 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 as though is the instrument of finishing, finishing of the, the armies of the demons. Nisha Chara Chamu. Chamu is army. Nisha Chara is Rakshasa. Abhigata is killing. So, the army of the demons were killed by Rama. So, Rama is the instrument is a means, karana, for, for the destruction of the armies of demons. Therefore, Trithiya Vibhakti Ramayana. Ramaya Tasmai Namaha. What is Ramaya? What is it? Chaturthi. What karaka is that? What is Sampradana? When do you use Sampradana? Sampradana, the action done for the sake of whom? is called as sampradana. Action for what it is done, why it is done. Kimartam sampradana. Right? Avam gurukulam gachami. Who goes? Avam karta. Kutra gachami? Karma. Avam gurukulam gachami. Avam gurukulam jnanaya gachami. Jnanaya is what? For knowledge. Jnana Prabhdaya, for gaining knowledge. Why do you go to Gurukula? For gaining knowledge. That is the purpose of action, Sampradana. I offer Namaskara to Acharya. Aham, Acharya. The Namaskara goes to whom? Acharya and Namaha, you can say simply. Namaskara to Acharya. The Namaskara done for whom? Here Rama is... We are offering our salutations to Rama. Therefore, Chaturthi Bhakti Sampradana. And also, wherever Namaha is there, Chaturthi will be there. Right? Namaha, the Padam will govern Chaturthi. Namaha is Abhyaya. Abhyaya Padam, it will govern Chaturthi Vibhakti. Rama Nasti. It is Ramat Nasti. Sandhi has happened. What Sandhi? What Sandhi? Ramat Nasti. Okay. Level 2, have you seen this Sandhi before? Ramat Nasti? Okay, no problem, leave it out, we will see again. <coughs> Ramat Nasti Parayanam Parataram. Compared to Rama, there is no ultimate Parayanam, the destination. Parataram, great, supreme, uh, the ultimate. About is not that other than Rama. So Panchami Vibhakti is used. When there is a comparison or use from where the action <coughs> takes place. When two persons are there, you are comparing. Right? Then Panchami is used. Compared to that, this is better. Right? So Panchami is used. So in Ramat, Parataram, Nasti. There is no, nobody, no abode, no Parataram, no Parayanam. Now there is no greater abode than Rama. Than Rama. That's it. Ramasya Dasaha Agam Asmi. I am the servant of the Rama. Ramasya. Here Agam Asmi. Agam Dasaha Asmi. Agam Asmi. I am. What? Dasaha. I am the servant. Of whom? Ramasya. So Ramasya. What karaka is that? Huh? Shakti Vrati is not a karaka. Shakti Vrati is not a karaka. It is Samanda. That's not a karaka. It is not connected with the Kriya directly. Kriya is what Asmi. Agam 
Asmi. What has to do with Ra the Dasa? This Ramasya. Aham Dasa Asmi. Subject is there, predicate is there. I am the Dasa is there. I am the servant. Of whom? Rama. What is the connection between Rama and Asmi? I am not Rama. Ramasya Dasa Asmi. Matuhu Dasa Asmi. What does it mean? So Rama is connected to Dasa, not to Asmi. Not to the Kriyapam directly. Right? Therefore, it is not a Karaka. Shashti Vivakti is not a Karaka. Generally, it comes uh, the sense of that which belongs to Samantha, relation, connection, that right? Samantha. But at some other Shashti, we will see <coughs> Karthari Shashti, Karmani Shashti, and all. That is a different thing. Rame Chitta Layaha Sada Bhavutume. May my Chitta Laya get resolved, be, uh, be in Sada always in Rama. May my mind always be in Rama. Rame is a locus. Therefore, it is Adhikarana Karaka, Saptami, Vibhakti. So, all the Vibhaktis are covered. The last one is Sambodhana. Bho Rama. Hey Rama. Maam Uddhara. You please. Uddhara. You please lift me up. Right? So, all the Karakas are there. And all the uh, Ekvachanam of all the Vibhaktis are used. So, this is a. We will chant this every class. Okay. Now, let us move on to the Rama Shabda. You can repeat after me. You all know Rama Shabda? Rama Shabda is the most difficult Shabda. You know, not in terms of memor memorizing, in terms of applying the Sutra and deriving the, <laughs> the Padam. From Rama, you are getting all the Padam. So many Sutra, so many exceptions are there. Better to memorize it. Why should you, why should you scratch your head with the uh, Sutras? Better to memorize. Certain things we need to just memorize. We can avoid sutra. Sutra use sutra is the see we have to know how to use the sutra. With the, with the minimum effort we get more. There we can use sutra. This involves more effort. Better memorization is better. Effort. We memorize this. Akarantaha pullingaha Rama Shabdaha. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
ಓಕೆ ಅಡಿವೆ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪದ ಪೂರ್ಣ ವಿಧಂ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ